This video demonstrates a technique for searching and filtering records on larger databases using Alpha 5 and a SQL Server backend. This example is for a client that currently has about 125,000 records. But he's expecting to grow and as, as he pursues national distribution, uh, his databases are going to grow to millions of, of records. So we developed a technique that would allow him to get to his data as quickly as possible. First, let's take a quick look at the application behavior, and then we'll show you how we implemented the code. Now, looking at this page, it appears to be a standard search part of a grid in Alpha. However, this is actually two grids, the parent grid being the search parameters, and the child grid being the, the search results. And we've styled the grid to emulate the look and feel of a search component. What this does is allows us to store these parameters, which has the, uh, allows the user to keep coming back, refining his search, and by default, it saves the last query performed. And it has the additional benefit of providing a query history should you choose to collect the query parameters for further analysis of the search patterns of your, uh, of your users. So as you can see, our, our initial search as we start up here is has the last name of Martino, and we found seven records. Let's just change this to any name that has the letter A in it and execute the search. And you'll see when it comes back, we don't allow the system to return uh, any more than 99 records at a time. This is important with, because the technique that we use writes the records that were found into a, a temporary table that allows us to allows the end user to uh, further filter and identify the the customer that they're working with. Let's go back and enter Martino again. One of the important things to note here is that in past development, we could get away with creating a customer record that might have first name, last name, home phone, work phone, cell phone, and email, and that's that's about it. Nowadays, of course, there are so many ways to contact people. We might have, uh, as we look at the contact info, we might have a uh, home phone, cell phone, uh, an alternate work phone, a second cell phone, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Skype, all of these different contact points with which to reach someone. So we felt it important that we store that in a separate table. This gives us maximum flexibility. The problem with that, of course, means that it makes our search just a little more difficult. If we have to search on multiple addresses, search on multiple contact points, and in this case, search on multiple service requests, well then we need to be able to accommodate all of those various combinations of, of query parameters into a single search, which is what we've done. So if we look at our search options, we have everything from customer ID, first and last name. We can search by phone number, email, uh, et cetera, right down to the serial number, purchase order number that would be associated with a particular service request. Uh, you'll note that if we do an address search, if I were to just start typing in Lupine and execute my search, I would find all of the clients that live on Lupine Lane, Lupine Hills, uh, etc. all the permutations of Lupine. We can also search on the, the street address uh, number, and you'll find, of course, if we do this, this gets us a, a rifle shot right to that address. So there's some very interesting things going on here that uh, we'll get into as we look at the code. This screenshot of our data model shows how we're connected from the customer table to the customer type, customer feedback, the service request tables, various customer contact points, uh, contact point types. So you can see there's a fairly complex set of relationships just surrounding the basic information. Now this alternative to Alpha's basic search uses a stored procedure to filter the records returned to the client's browser. But when you're dealing with large sets of data, we want to optimize the code to ensure that you get the desired performance. So the process is to identify the first, most likely instance of a match in a table, then exit out of the remaining code so it doesn't perform unnecessary additional queries. The end result is a list of matching customer primary keys, which we then join with customer table, 
with links to its child tables uh, that we can then use in the grid which displays our results. So let's take a quick look at the stored procedure. We pass all of our search parameters as we look at this procedure structure. First thing we do is pass in all of our parameters. We set the values to null if they're empty. And then since we are storing the last search result in a table, uh, the first thing we do is we clear out the previous result set. Uh, that's what we see in this block of code here for that particular user. Then the next thing we do is we, we store the search parameters into a separate table, again for, for history, so that we can go back and analyze users' search patterns, their search history, and see if, if we can continue to optimize the code. If we know that 80% uh, of the queries are based on phone number, then we may want to do some additional work to ensure that the database is optimized to do that, adding indexes moving the search, the, the search order up in the stored procedure, etc. As we check each of these parameters, the first thing we do, of course, is the simplest, which is the customer ID. If we have a customer ID, if it's not empty, then we uh, get that customer's ID and we insert it into our search results table. Since we have the customer ID, we really don't need to search on anything else. We don't care if there's any additional records in the child tables. We know we have the, the appropriate customer. We just return and drop down out of the procedure, and, and we return, back to the, the, return the data back to the grid. We're done. We don't have to go any further. But if we have to start searching, for instance, the address, we need to do a couple more things. We split the address into street number and street name. So this allows us to do some index searches against those two values and very quickly identify the appropriate address. Then we go ahead and insert the customer's ID again into the search results table. Once that's complete and we come back into alpha, we have two alpha grids that tie this all together. Customer search grid itself, as you can see, we're incorporating all of the search parameters into a table and laying it out to emulate the search part. And then once we submit this grid and save the records that links the search result IDs to the customer table, which again produces the final result with links to service request, address, and contact info. This technique is particularly important with larger sets of data because uh, stored procedures are much more efficient than submitting queries that are written on the fly. Stored procedures are pre-compiled and will run much more efficiently than constantly sending a dynamic SQL string to the database where it has to recalculate the execution plan. I trust you find this uh, interesting and uh, maybe look at this as a technique to use when you start having to work with uh, larger data sets. Thanks for watching.